My coffee uh, journey started with a cappuccino at Intelligentsia 13 years ago. It kind of changed the course of my life. My name is Yikai Lim and I make coffee. Today we're here in uh, Konoshenti Coffee at the Roastery in the Fashion District in what was once the produce market. I grew up in a, a Malaysian Taiwanese household and you know grew up with obviously a, a diversity of, of different foods and then coming to America and then be able to kind of taste all sorts of different foods and, and coffee for me was an extension of that exploration in food. Started the shop in 08, following uh, kind of the downturn and a shift from uh, the architecture practice, projects drying up, had uh, amazing coffee at Intelligentsia and kind of changed the course of my life. It was just amazing to be able to try all these different coffees from around the world within that cup capture all these nuances and all these flavors I've never tasted in my life and so I got really obsessed with that and you know that's when I kind of made the shift I uh, started a little pop-up in Eagle Rock in 09 uh, met Na Young the owner of Proof Baker and then we partnered up to open up in Atwater and then it wasn't until uh, 2016 that we uh, started our roastery. Welcome to Kona Shanti Coffee this is the coffee shop portion of the space. Uh, what we have here is uh, really just an approachable bar, uh, a mural that depicts the process of coffee from farm to cup. Um, on the espresso machine, we have a two-group Mavam out of Seattle. That's a dual boiler. Uh, again, it gives us that consistency in pressure and temperature. Today we're pulling a blend, uh, it's called our Hoot Blend, and it consists of uh, equal Brazil, Colombia, and Guatemala. Here we have our retired roaster, one kilo, that we started our roasting with. Here's our uh, green coffee storage. Probat that we're roasting on the UG15. Uh, the beans get as get dropped in the green unroasted beans get dropped in here. Uh, goes into the drum once it's heated, and then this is the cooling, large cooling tray, and then the chaff collector. So the space is about 2,000 square feet. It gave us an opportunity to be able to uh, store our coffee uh, and also operate a cafe, which allows us to roast and then immediately be able to taste what we're roasting. Um, the roaster is imported from Germany. It's a Probat UG15. It allows us to do about 20 pounds to up to about 30 pounds every uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so it, it's a real workhorse, it's cast iron. The, the, the roaster we, we purchased um, just to kind of experiment with. Um, few years before we ended up getting the pro bat uh, similar cast iron it's a one kilo you know the funny story was was that he, he's up in Sunland where we had the roaster and it's dry out there and there's always fires and whatever uh, there's one day when we were roasting where the uh, the fire department was actually circling around the, the roaster the amount of smoke that it was producing the big difference between being in specialty coffee and not being in specialty is it really comes down to sourcing you know, getting, getting to know the producers, uh, be able to travel the origin. For us, there's always that hunt for, for the next coffee that, that produces flavor that you never tasted before. And, you know, we work with slightly uh, smaller batches, around eight kilo, and the whole process takes about eight to about 12 minutes. And then once you get into uh, what they call the first crack, um, it's kind of a, a very explosive, like, exchange of energy 
uh, at that point it becomes this really kind of fine dance of, of applying energy you know air and heat to that coffee and that's where you could also lose your roast within you know 30 seconds well the important thing is to uh to really develop your palate and to have an idea of what your end goal is and for me it's, it's really about cup clarity uh, sweetness and really a balance and really highlighting the coffee without any kind of smokiness or over roast how do we get from you know that green coffee to that end, that end product we're gonna be doing a quick demo of uh, pour over which you can get at any of our cafes gives you an opportunity to try any of our origins that we're roasting so we're gonna start off with grinding the beans It's going to be a medium to fine grind. And today we're going to be using the uh, V60, uh, making about 10 ounces of brewed coffee. So the uh, hot water we're using doesn't have to be off boil. I would say probably uh, below 200 degrees. So the first step is just to hit the grounds and get that nice blue. We'll let that uh, sit for about 30 seconds and that allows the coffee to open up. So we're in th about 30 seconds in. Gonna hit it with uh, some more hot water and kind of go in a nice gentle circular motion, saturating all the grounds. And this whole process should take about three minutes. So the first pour, nice and consistent and slow. And what you want to do is just kind of develop that uh, muscle memory. And there we are at 220 grams, and we should be finishing at four, about 405 grams. Right before the water uh, fully comes through, you want to hit it again with just another uh, 200 grams of hot water, gently, slowly, allowing that coffee to extract. All right, so we finished the pour over in right about three minutes and 15 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and pour into a carafe with that coffee integrate and also cool it down so it's at a good drinking temperature. Our cafes are uh, designed in a way that's very approachable. Uh, it's not minimal by any means. We try to make it inviting a lot of uh, materials that aren't alienating. And that, that kind of extends our ethos about what we want to present in, in our product. Uh, something that's very accessible, but at the same time, be able to experience uh, something that they can get at a chain. And then ultimately, uh, the end goal is obviously that they experience what I've experienced, you know, 13 years ago, having that, that one cup of coffee and, and really changing you know how, how you taste uh, for anyone interested in starting a coffee shop to keep an open mind keep tasting as much food as possible and, and ultimately that will translate into preference in, in, in coffee and also appreciation for specialty coffee um, because there's so much effort put in at the farm level and, and, and we don't want that to get lost as you pursue your endeavor and, and really keep that in the back of your mind that, that you know, the, the, the sourcing of coffee is paramount and at the same time, um, keep an open mind about building your palate because it ultimately will, will translate into what you're tasting in the cup. Mm -hmm.